Grace and peace to both of the congregations called St. Luke that I am privileged to serve in Lakeview, Chicago and Park Ridge. In these most holy days, I want to share with you a beautiful Easter allegory written by Walter Wangren. It's called Ragman. The book is in our library here in Park Ridge. Ragman is a story about the promise of Easter and the power of Good Friday that I shared with the congregations I served for the first 20 years of my ministry. I share it with all of you now as we enter this most holy of weeks, knowing that this journey we are making during this holy week is a journey from death to life. And it's a journey that we are all making toward our home, our eternal home in the love of Christ. So here's the story, Ragman by Walter Wangren. I saw a strange sight. I stumbled upon a story most strange, like nothing in my life. My street sense, my sly tongue had ever prepared me for. Hush, child, hush now. I will tell you the story. Even before the dawn one Friday morning, I noticed a young man, handsome and strong, walking the alleys of our city. He was pulling an old cart filled with clothes, both bright and new, and he was calling in a clear tenor voice, rags, new rags for old. I take your tired rags, rags. Now this is a wonder, I thought to myself. For the man stood six foot four, and his arms were like tree limbs, hard and muscular, and his eyes flashed intelligence. Could he find no better job than this, to be a ragman in the inner city? I followed him. My curiosity drove me, and I wasn't disappointed. Soon the ragman saw a woman sitting on her back porch. She was sobbing into a handkerchief sighing and shedding a thousand tears. Her knees and elbows made her sad, made a sad X. Her shoulders shook, her heart was breaking. The ragman stopped his cart. Quietly he walked to the woman, stepping round tin cans, dead toys, and pampers. Give me your rag, he said gently, and I'll give you another. He slipped the handkerchief from her eyes. She looked up and he laid across her palm a linen cloth so clean and new and beautiful. It shined. She blinked from the gift to the giver. Then as he began to pull his cart again, the ragman did a strange thing. He put her stained handkerchief to his own face. And then he began to weep to sob as grievously as she had done, his shoulders shaking, yet she was left without a tear. This is a wonder I breathed to myself, and I followed the sobbing ragman like a child who cannot turn away from the mystery. Rags, rags, new rags for old. In a little while, when the sky showed gray behind the rooftops, and I could see the shredded curtains hanging out black windows. The ragman came upon a girl whose head was wrapped in a bandage, whose eyes were empty. Blood soaked the bandage. A single line of blood ran down her cheek. Now the tall ragman looked upon this child with pity, and he drew a lovely yellow bonnet from his core cart. Give me your rag, he said tracing his own line on her cheek, and I'll give you mine. The child could only gaze at him while he loosed the bandage, removed it, and tied it on his own head, and the bonnet he set on hers, and I gasped at what I saw, for with the bandage went the wound. Against his brow it ran a darker, more substantial blood, his own. Rags, 
Rags, I take old rags, cried the sobbing, bleeding, strong, intelligent ragman. The sun hurt both the sky now and my eyes. The ragman seemed more and more to hurry. Are you going to work? He asked a man who leaned against the telephone pole. The man shook his head. The ragman pressed him. Do you have a job? Are you crazy? Sneered the other. He pulled away from the pole, revealing the right sleeve of his jacket. Flat, the cuff stuck into the pocket. He had no arm. So, said the ragman, give me your jacket and I'll give you mine. So much quiet authority in his voice. The one-armed man took off his jacket. So did the ragman. And I trembled at what I saw for the ragman's arm stayed in its sleeve. And when the other put it on, he had two good arms, thick as tree limbs, but the ragman had only one. Go to work, he said. After that, he found a drunk lying unconscious beneath an army blanket, an old man hunched and sick. He took that blanket and wrapped it around himself. But for the drunk, he left new clothes. And now I had to run to keep up with the ragman, though he was weeping uncontrollably and bleeding freely at his forehead, pulling his cart with one arm, stumbling for drunkenness, falling again and again, exhausted, old, old and sick. Yet he went with terrible speed. On spider's legs, he skittered through the alleys of the city this mile and the next until he came to its limits and then he rushed beyond. I wept to see the change in this man. I hurt to see his sorrow. And yet I need to see where he was going in such haste, perhaps to know what drove him so. The little old rag man, he came to a landfill. He came to the garbage pits and I waited to help him in what he did, but I hung back, hiding. He climbed a hill. With tormented labor, he cleared a little space on that hill. Then he sighed. He lay down. He pillowed his head on a handkerchief and a jacket. He covered his bones with an army blanket. And he died. Oh, how I cried to witness that death. I slumped in a junked car and wailed and mourned as one who had no hope because I had come to love this ragman. Every other face had faded in the wonder of this man, and I cherished him. But he died. I sobbed myself to sleep. I did not know. How could I know that I slept through Friday night and Saturday and it's night too? But then on Sunday morning, I was awakened by a violence. Light, pure, hard, demanding light slammed against my sour face and I blinked and I looked and I saw the first wonder of all. There was the ragman folding the blanket most carefully, a scar on his forehead, but alive. And beside that, healthy. There was no sign of sorrow or age and all the rags that he had gathered shined for cleanliness. Well, then I lowered my head and trembling for all that I had seen, I myself walked up to the ragman. I told him my name with shame, for I was a sorry figure next to him. Then I took off all my clothes in that place, and I said to him with dear yearning in my voice, dress me. He dressed me. My Lord, he put new rags on me, and I am a wonder beside him. The ragman, the ragman, the Christ.